OpenAI just released the new GPT-4, and I wanted to put it to the test. Sam says you can now give it 300 pages of information, but there's a question on everyone's mind. What's performance like? I spent $200 making 250 API calls, testing to see how good the new GPT-4 was at retrieving information from a long context. I dropped a random fact somewhere in the middle of the text to see if GPT-4 could pull it out. I called it a needle in the haystack analysis. Then I ran 250 variations to see where the model broke down. By the end of this video, you're gonna learn what I found and you're also gonna save 200 bucks by not needing to run this test yourself. Let's get into it. Hello, good people. OpenAI had their dev day on Monday. Sam announced that the new GPT-4 Turbo would support up to 128,000 tokens of context. This means that you can send up to 300 pages of information in a single API call. Before Monday, you can only do eight pages. That's pretty nutty. But there's a big unanswered question in the room. What's performance like? I wanted to test this out. You see, if you're gonna be a proficient practitioner of language models, it's good to build up an intuition for how they work and their strengths and their limits. I wanna make this extremely clear. This test isn't an attempt to dunk on OpenAI. I love them. They're building bleeding edge products that are literally changing how we build, view, and interact with technology. I wanted to push GPT-4 not only to build up my own intuition, but to learn and share my findings along the way. Okay, back to our regularly scheduled programming. I'm a simple person, so I wanted a simple test. I would put a random fact in the middle of a long document to see if GPT-4 could retrieve it. I called it a needle in the haystack analysis. The test would be set up like this. I would take Paul Graham essays and use them as background context. This would be the Hey, in the haystack. He has over 218 essays, so there's plenty of tokens or words to work with. Then I needed a random statement I knew that Paul wouldn't say. I went with, the best thing to do in San Francisco is go to Dolores Park and eat a sandwich on a sunny day. Next up, I wanted to do a few manual tests to make sure everything is working smoothly. Let's start on the small side, only 750 words. This is about a thousand tokens. So with Paul Graham's essay, I'm gonna randomly place my sentence in it. Then I took that essay with my random sentence and gave it to GPT-4 and I asked it, hey, what's the best thing to do in San Francisco according to the context? Let's see if it got it right. Yep. As expected, no problem. Now let's do that same test, but instead of 750 words, let's bump it up to the maximum, 96,000 words. This is the equivalent of 300 pages of information, practically a whole book. I placed my random statement in there again and asked if GPT-4 could pull it out. Hmm, it didn't get it, so it must break down somewhere in between 750 words and 96,000 words. I needed to run a lot of tests to see where the model broke down. I decided to test 15 different document lengths, ranging from 750 words to 96,000 words. But get this, it turns out that where you place the randomly chosen statement in the document could have a factor on accuracy. There is an influential paper called Lost in the Middle. It says that it's easier for models to recall statements that are at the beginning of the document. But when they're in the middle, it's a little bit more difficult for them. I wanted to test this too, so I tried putting my random statement at the top of the document, at the bottom, in the middle, and 12 other spots. But there's a problem. GPT-4 charges you a cent per thousand tokens that you give it. Doing some quick math, I figured this would cost about 200 bucks. That's a lot, but not unbearable. I just needed to make sure that I didn't run the test multiple times. There's three key pieces to the test. One, a script that could dynamically generate the appropriate context length and insert my random statement into different places. Places. Two, a script to use GPT-4 to actually go and retrieve the fact. And three, a way to evaluate the answer automatically. The model's response will be scored on a level of one, not accurate, to 10, accurate. Okay, now that I have those pieces, let's run the whole thing. The test took three days because I got rate limited by OpenAI. Turns out that GPT-4 has a requests per day limit of 100, so I had to wait a while. But it finished, and let's check out some of the samples. Okay, early on, it looks like it got the correct answer. Even at the large context lengths, it's also looking correct. Let's check out the super long context lengths. Hmm, yeah, not quite as good. Great, now that we have our data, it's time to package it up as a visualization. As a data person, I have visualizations running through my head all day long. For this one, I had three dimensions to take care of document depth, 
document length, and then also the performance of retrieval. So I decided to do a 2D heat map with a third dimension of color for performance. With the final test results, I did some pandas gymnastics to combine and prep all the data. Then it was off to Google Sheets for a pivot table. You don't need to overcomplicate it. From there, I passed it on to Google Slides for a little custom formatting. If this image got shared, I wanted to make sure that it could stand on its own with all the information the viewer would need. Let's run through these final results together. So with this heat map that I have here, the x-axis is gonna be the context length. This is how long the document actually is. Here we have documents that were tested at 1,000 tokens, and here we have documents that were tested at 128,000 tokens. Then we have the placed fact document depth. So my randomly placed fact, if I put it up at the top of the document, then that's where these tests were run. If I put it at the bottom of the document, that's where these tests were run, and here's everything in between. And then the third dimension is gonna be the accuracy of retrieval. So the more accurate something was, it has a green. The less accurate it was, it has a red. So my first finding from what I saw here, at lower context levels, before 64,000 tokens, the retrieval was pretty good. I only saw 100%. It was 100% accurate at pulling out my simple statement. Cool. Now, the second thing that I saw was at longer context lengths, the model's performance started to degrade. So you can see all of the red and light green that we have up here. My third finding was that the performance especially degraded at the beginning of the document, meaning the first half of the document had worse performance than the second half of a document. That's pretty interesting. And my fourth and final takeaway is that if the fact was placed as the very first thing at the top of the document, meaning it was the first sentence that it saw, well, then it retrieval was 100%. So what's the main takeaway for me? Well, this tells me that yes, context lengths are very, very important, and it's really cool that they're starting to expand. However, because there's a performance question in mind, this means that retrieval retrieval is still a very important topic, and it pays dividends to invest in your retrieval process. If you want to learn how to invest more in your retrieval process, I'm starting to put a lot more content on fullstackretrieval.com where you can go and learn about different advanced retrieval methods. Go and check it out. All right, so after running this test, there's a few things to keep in mind. Number one, more data. Because it was so expensive, I didn't grab as much data as I want. This test should be run with at least 10x or 20x as much data. This will help with statistical significance. Number two, high variance. There's an extremely high variance with language models, so your results will vary based on the prompts, the temperature, the question type, and the random statement you put in there. Number three, models will get better. I have full confidence that OpenAI and the rest of the model providers will eventually make in-context retrieval 100% accurate. I put all of my analysis and projects on a silver platter for a small group of friends. If you want me to send you updates too, you can sign up in the description. So question for you. What do you think about long context links and their ability to retrieve? I'm curious to know. Leave me a comment. We'll see you later.